Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is March 4th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. In World Affairs. On February 24th, 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in order to overtake the capital city and claim it as its, as its own territory. Hundreds of civilians in Ukraine have been reported to be killed as Russian forces have carried out a massive bombing campaign. Although the fight is ongoing, Ukraine and Russia have tentatively agreed to create hum humanitarian corridors that will allow for safe evacuations of civilians. The Biden administration has offered temporary immigration status to Ukrainian citizens in the U.S. to prevent deportation and busloads of volunteers cross Polish border into Ukraine to help fight against Russian forces. While the world has its eyes on the conflict in Ukraine, let's not forget that the country is made up of people just like you and me who are defenseless and afraid. What would you do if a neighboring country invaded your city and your life was in danger? Today, we have a very special guest, Alexandra Yurkova, a Ukrainian woman who was in Ukraine when the assault began. Alexandra, I know that this is a traumatic time for you and your family. Thank you so much for agreeing to share your story with the Feisty. Please tell us a little bit about the life you created in Ukraine before the invasion by Russia. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, hi, Tierica. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Alexandra. I'm from Ukraine, I'm from Kharkiv. I was born in Kharkiv and lived there for 30 years. Um, I am um, a pro project manager in IT um, and I've worked in Kharkiv uh, for almost eight years. Um, with a lot of friends and family. Um, and um, um, all my life I lived in Ukraine and uh, started traveled the world not so, um, not so long ago. What a great life you built for yourself, Alexandra. A life that was interrupted by Russia's invasion. For many of us who hadn't been following foreign affairs, the invasion of Ukraine was a complete shock. Were the people of Ukraine warned that this war was imminent? Um, actually, uh, we were in um, in very bad mood for uh, almost uh, a month before the invasion because we knew that the um, uh, army, Russian army, is standing near our um, borders. And um, as Kharkiv is uh, the closest city to the Russian board, we were thinking about um, moving or moving uh, forward to in, in, to Ukraine or maybe going abroad. And um, on the 23rd of February, I went to sleep around 3 a.m. because uh, mm, we were we were searching the news every night and every day and checking if everything is if everything is okay. Uh, but after two hours of sleep at five p.m., I was woke out by very very hard noise. And I live on sixteenth floor, and I can see the city uh, very well. And uh, on the horizon, I saw uh, like the big the big light. Uh, and my husband came in and we knew that this is the war has started and we started to check in the internet and uh, uh, there was um, an um, announcement from Putin one hour ago that he started the war with Ukraine. I am so sorry to hear this. I can't imagine being so close to such a traumatic event. What was your immediate reaction to the war beginning? in Ukraine? Um, first of all, we 
panicked, <laughs> of course, um, a lot of tears or a lot of fear. Uh, but then we started to, we, we didn't know where exactly the explosion was. Uh, so we started to call our friends and family and checking if, every, every, if everyone is alive. Uh, so um, I checked with my mother and he lives in the start of the city. So if uh, Russian army will start to invade, it will be my mother's house first to meet them. So we immediately immediately call her and uh, she um, uh, packed something. She even forgot her glasses uh, and uh, she got to my home and my sister also with her husband and we uh, decided to leave the city as soon as possible because only me and my husband had uh, we have car so we and um, we managed to escape the same day after two or three hours of everything uh, has started an evacuation was the smartest move alexandra did you and your family have a plan uh yeah we didn't know where to go but um my Grandma, where we are now, is living in the center of Ukraine, uh, in near Cherkasy. And um, we knew that it is um, uh, calm here, uh, calm, yeah, calm. Uh, so first of all, we came here, uh, but we had to leave the city um, immediately and we didn't have enough petrol so we had to um, stand in a line for an hour to get some petrol uh, outside the city and then uh, move move forward uh, to the center of Ukraine. So you're in a much more safe place right? How are you feeling right now? Uh, we are feeling super not safe here anyway because Kyiv is near and also um, we are didn't um, um, got to the other part of Dnipro of the river and we have uh, only uh, three or four bridges to cross the river the Dnipro and if Russian army will do something to these bridges we will not have the possibility to uh, go to the uh, uh, Lviv or Ternopil or other cities that are safe. So today we are deciding that tomorrow we will go um, further, maybe to the Poland border. I am so glad you're safe for now, and I hope that you get to Poland safely as you continue to move for further away from the war zone. What is the general sentiment about the war? How do the people of Ukraine feel about Putin and his invasion of Russia? Um, you know, um, we think that he got crazy. <laughs> uh, we think that Putin uh, is insane and here, like Hitler here, uh, because uh, nobody start, starts war uh, during the night. Um, Mm, sorry, <laughs> around the big country, uh, only Hitler did this. Uh, so first of all, we think that he is insane and he's Hitler, and um, that um, uh, um, like I don't know why, but he has like bad tooth for Ukraine people. Uh, that we are do, do not want to live with Russia, that we want to live with European, like European cities. Uh, we want to democracy and everything. And uh, he's like this um, crazy old man that wants everything to be like in Soviet times, uh, because he I don't know he worked in KGB or something, and. Um, I think that he does not have support in his country uh, because uh, Russian people are afraid of him or um, they're just um, uh, 
I don't know, just scared. But here, we are not scared to defend our cities, our homes, and we believe that we will succeed in this war and that Ukrainian people will stand up, will rise our country from the ashes even um, because my city Kharkiv is now um, under bomb attacks and he uh, just ruining everything and everything that they see, not, not military objects, and uh, not not our army uh, today um our my mother house was um i don't know shot by grad uh, by this very he heavy artillery uh, sorry for my english <laughs> i i don't know the military words <laughs> i work with it <sighs> so we actually yes we believe that putin uh, I don't know, we'll die, <laughs> and we will succeed, we will defend him, and we will rise our country from the ashes. Thank you so much for sharing, Alexandra. You have the microphone now. Is there anything you want everyone to know about what's happening in Ukraine? Um, I want to tell that uh, Ukrainian people are very strong, and um, we really believe in our uh, victory uh, and we, how to say it, um, we are European <laughs> and American people. <laughs> we like, um, how to say it, we are civilized, <laughs> civilized people. We, for, um, during the last eight years since the Maidan, we did so much for our country. Um, we we built our cities. We have everything that we want to continue. We want to live in our country. We don't want to be um, guests somewhere. We want to live there, and we will defend it. And um, if they want, if Putin wants Ukraine uh, to be destroyed he will need to kill everyone because if one ukrainian will stand up he will fight or she we will fight till the end alexandra we stand with you and your family and the citizens of ukraine how can we support you um i think that if you're talking about this, if you're telling what's going on in Ukraine right now, it's very, it is very big help because um, information and um, ability to think about, to talk about, um, that's what made us uh, and our country strong because we think about things. Uh, we have big feminist community. We have big LGBT uh, plus community, um, pride. Um, we happy that you're talking about everything. Um, but I, uh, other things uh, we will do by ourselves. <laughs> Thank you very much that you're talking. We got you, Alex. For those who want to help Ukraine, please support the Army Aid Come Back Alive Fund on Instagram. Alexander, we pray for your safety as you continue to move away from the war zone. Please check in with us when you've made it safely. In other news, Kuwait, usually regarded as one of the most open societies in the Gulf, first allowed women the right to vote in 2005. In a move to liberate women's participation in society, this past October, women in Kuwait were allowed to join the military forces although the roles were limited to support units like medical, administrative, and technical. The restrictions also mandate that women would need the permission of a male guardian to enlist. Women must wear head coverings and women are banned from carrying weapons. The restrictions were added after a defense minister was questioned by a conservative lawmaker, Hamdan Azmi. Azmi argued that having women in combat roles does not fit with a woman's nature. The head of the Kuwaiti Women's Cultural and Social Society said the ministry's restrictions were discriminatory 
and unconstitutional and threatened legal action by the organization. So women were on the road to gaining the freedom to create careers in the military. And then a man stepped in and said, no, we have to continue to control them. And then everyone agreed. Damn patriarchy. In other news, good news for adults hoping to boost their credit scores. All major credit bureaus and mortgage buyer Fannie Mae recently announced that they will allow rent payments to count toward credit and loans. It's been reported that roughly 50 million American consumers have either a limited credit history or no history at all. This monumental move will allow everyone to establish credit history without having to break through the credit bureaucracy in order to do it. To add your rental payments to your credit history, you must sign up with a rental credit reporting service like Rental Karma, which reports rent payments to TransUnion. In order to qualify you use the to use the service, you must rent from a property management company or from the owner of the property. Rental Karma will verify your payment history with your landlord or property manager and include six months of past rent payments in this reporting. There's a $50 startup fee to begin using the service, and then you'll pay $8.95 per month. Landlords can begin reporting your rent payments as well. Com companies like TransUnion accept rent payment directly from landlords, but your landlord will need to sign up for one of the services and pay the associated fees. For someone with a credit score at or below 550, the average increase after factoring in rent is more than 50 points. What does this mean for women? Establishing good credit opens up a world of opportunities for funding a new business, covering surprise expenses for your children or family, and it can even be a part of a master plan to escape an abusive relationship. Let's get our coins together, ladies. <laughs> oh, it's time for a break. What is it like to be a modern day witch? Comedian Pete Davidson has dated some of the most attractive women in Hollywood. But how? Answers to these questions and more right after the break. Be right back. Hello, my name is Jade. I am the owner and operator of Flick of the Wrist Exclusives. I customize and repair shoes. I'm considered a modern day cobbler. And I also make and customize clothing. A little background information on myself, as transparent as can be, I came from selling and using drugs. At one point I ended up hitting rock bottom and just bored playing around with the shoe one day I customized the shoe and put it on social media and it blew up from there and in the process of it God allowed me to use that platform on social media to begin to tell my story of the things that happened to me when I was in the streets and I began to heal and my business began to grow it has been such a journey it's been amazing because prior to i couldn't even draw anything besides my name you know and to be able to do some of the things that god has allowed me to do now it's been miraculous thank you welcome back i am t erica with the feisty news for women girl guess what we're celebrating feisty women living the feisty life by profiling women who have made decisions that do not align with society's expectations for being a proper lady. And guess what? They end up loving life because of it. In this installment of The Feisty Life, you get to meet Ashley, a feisty woman who has chosen a path that many are afraid of, yet she claims there is absolutely no reason to be. Ashley, welcome to The Feisty. Can you share what makes your life so feisty? Hello, my name is Ashley. I am an initiated priestess and a witch. I started my spiritual journey a long time ago when I was 14 years old, I'm 30 now, and I stepped into the world of magic by learning about tarot cards. So what are tarot cards? Tarot cards are a tool that help you reflect on the energies in your life and what's happening to you internally. I think a lot of people think witchcraft is fortune telling and spooky, scary, evil stuff. That's not it at all. What witchcraft is, is using the four elements, fire, air, earth, and water, and conjuring those to create new energy to change things in your life. 
So if you have a situation where maybe you're not getting along with your boss, you would create a jar to help sweeten up this situation. Or let's say that you are a little bit low on rent. You could make a money jar to help bring the energy of money to you. Now, there are different aspects of witchcraft. It's actually so vast. Witchcraft is really an umbrella term, and it includes a lot of different practices. So just for a few different names, we can talk about Thelema, we can talk about Wicca, and of course, we have Eastern practices too, like Taoism and Hinduism. Now, do you have to believe in other gods to be a witch? No. If you choose to work with or worship other gods, that's a personal choice. Witchcraft gives you the freedom to believe in the world around you as you see it. And that's what I love so much about it. Witchcraft has helped me empower myself. It's helped me get through the toughest times in my life. When I broke up with my fiance in 2019, I used witchcraft to help heal my heart and heal my mind so I would not feel so broken. Witchcraft can also help you achieve goals in life. If you wanted to do a candle spell to bring in new jobs, that's totally an option. Of course, during this time, you would use elements and the herbs, crystals, all these things put together to create a ritual or a spell. So it's kind of like cooking in that way. So I make a recipe of all of the different energies that I want to use to bring my intention to fruition. And then I add them all together and I meditate with it. Witchcraft includes a lot of mindfulness. Mindfulness is a really big buzzword in the psychological community, but it's also esoteric magical. Mindfulness is your superpower. When you are able to step away and process those emotions and give yourself the space to respond instead of react, your entire life will change. Magic has influenced me in so many ways. And in fact, for a long time, I was in the broom closet. I was so scared of telling people about what I did because I thought they would think I was evil or a bad person. And that's not the case at all. Magic brings you strength. Magic brings you confidence and gives you a better connection to the world and the universe at large. Now, of course, there are people who do not so ethical things with magic. That is not what I do, and that's your own choice. We call these the left-hand path and the right-hand path. The right-hand path is healing. There's a lot of light and a lot of love whereas the left-hand path is what we consider to be a little bit darker. Now, it's very important to understand that darker does not mean evil. These are the parts of ourselves, our shadow self, that are hard to look at. The things that we've rejected or society has rejected in us and learning to overcome those societal expectations and boxes that we're placed in to bring us empowerment and learn to love those things about ourselves. I work with both the left-hand path and the right-hand path. In magic, we call that working with both hands. The other thing about witchcraft is, like I said before, a lot of people think it's about fortune telling. Magic can help you change the future to your will, but it does not predict the future. You predict the future. Anyone can practice magic. It is your divine birthright to harness the powers that live with inside of you to make changes in your life or build your own reality. And that is what makes magic so wonderful for people of all genders, all races. Magic is not just for women. Witchcraft is not just for women. It's for everyone. But I think that women in particular have found this unique aspect of life to help us break free from the patriarchy, from the societal norms, and be who we really are, which are fierce, vivacious, sexual creatures. If you're interested 
interested in learning more about magic, check out my podcast, The Occult Unveiled, where I interview witches and magicians from around the world in their own unique path in hopes that you may find your own spiritual guidance. Hey, Ashley, that was extremely informative. (laughs) Women used to be hung for being accused of being a witch and you openly immerse yourself in it, unafraid of the consequences. I love it. How about you set an intention for me and the feisty news? I would love for this new show to reach every woman who needs motivation, education, and inspiration to be free. Moving right along. Saturday Night Live comedian Pete Davidson has been in the news lately because his girlfriend Kim Kardashian's ex-husband has repeatedly targeted him for online abuse. Pete is taking the high road by not responding and playing into the abuser's games and maybe that's an indication of why this man has attracted some of the most beautiful faces in Hollywood. Pete has dated Ariana Grande, Kaya Gerber, and now Kim Kardashian. Many women and men wonder, how in the hell is he pulling this off? To some, Pete Davidson is an average looking guy without riches or a hard body. No six pack abs or Rolls Royce. What does he have to offer? Without knowing him personally, I have a guess. Pete is a comedian. The one thing he can probably offer that most men can't is a good time. When a woman ends an emotionally painful relationship where she doesn't feel valued or seen, all she really wants is a good time. She wants to laugh, be silly and feel pretty again. Pete, with his goofy nature and boyish charm, probably provides the good time needed to recover from a hurtful relationship. After I walked away from a traumatic situation, all I wanted was to be laughed, be fed, and felt on. I bet Pete could provide that. He doesn't come with marriage restrictions, requirements, or baby mama drama. All he has to do is lay the pipe, make her smile, and give her the peace she needs to feel like a woman again. If you're a man who wants to allow every woman to love you all you have to do is be a good person make sure she feels safe make her laugh and show her a good time thanks pete for doing that for women all across the country even if it's for a short time we still appreciate you thank you for watching the feisty news for women i am t erica remember be feisty Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty. News for women.